Thank you, Pradu. What a challenge. What a challenge after the, the six speakers this morning, more bright one than another. Jimmy, uh, where are you? Uh, he left? Jimmy, can I ask you a question? If Francisco had formulated his provocating wo words, not as decent poverty, but as decent poor life, would you be more comfortable with that? Okay, okay, uh, thank you. Thank you for the, the willingness to read the world, his work. Because I think, as a, as, as a few have mentioned, that you are much closer than your perception. Uh, person, micro, company, meso, macro, the, ec the economy. And I will add a fourth category, which is values. What we, I have heard this morning uh, on the, the micro level, on the person level, has been this outstanding lesson of leadership from George. Of course, I will not summarize that, but I will just pinpoint a, a, a few nudges. Uh, our common error in mental programming, because we are spontaneously looking with the mind, the, the mind eye negatively. Let, let's accept that most of the people are so, and let's accept that, that leaders are probably pathologically optimistic and able to give some meaning to something which does not mean, seems to be very meaningful. Um, let's accept also that leaders are persons who are breathing compassion and forgiveness. I think we can think about that. Are people able to recreate bond even in the worst situation of the hostage negotiation with anyone at any time. Let's accept that this is more, I will say, common. There are people who are really able to attract and long-term coach talents and people brave enough to invent new trails. Just a point, there is a, a form, it, there, you can have a contradiction between uh, the, the ability of a leader to be brave enough to take new trails and the ability to be a servant leader where we try to coach community of person who maybe are not able at this moment to take the new trail which would be appropriate. So there, I think there is an interesting issue at this level. At the interface between micro and meso and the company, uh, the role of the, the CEOs uh, that uh, Pierre Lecoq has emphasized, uh, the powerful of transforming CEO mindset, uh, of course, is the key articulation of humanizing globalization, and the specific target of CEOs as one place to work specially is of kind importance. And Pierre also mentioned uh, the syndrome of divided life, which very often in the, is expressed publicly in that category of person, which I think is, uh, is interesting to think about. At the meso level, at the company level, what I have heard uh, was the power of creating an atmosphere which will be caring, trustful, where not only delegation but real subsidiarity will take place within the organization. So how, how, are, you are, how you are able or not to really transfer the risk at the lowest level as the Navy pilot compared to, to the captain. That's an interesting idea. And, and last, uh, especially from Xavier Frontenier, uh, the idea that the servant leader uh, will be someone able to bring within the organization international diversity in order to open the horizon of the person. Person who will have a wise use of the debt in order not to put the, the, the hands of the, comp the, the company in the head of the creditors, even he managed even that zero debt. Um, I think that, that that's important. And, and last, uh, servant leader, there is a nice provocative argument there. Servant leader who will be the one able to preach how profit is the measurement of success and of the trust of the, uh, of the consumers. But in, in the case of the company he was running, he has been able to, comp to, to I would say, significantly abolish uh, the partition between employees and uh, shareholders because the stakeholders who are employees were converted largely as shareholders. Um, and last, uh, he put uh, on the scene 
the, the paradox or something which can appear initially if we, we look at that too quickly as a paradox, which is a company as, a go as an organization cannot last very long if it is not a serving organization, serving to the needs, serving to, to the needs of the clientele, serving to the latent markets, uh, serving to uh, the, the new non-address markets, and so on and so forth. Uh, among the discussion, not among the speakers, but among the dialogue and, and a few questions of, of, the, of the floor, uh, I pinpoint a very interesting question which is just behind the meso level of the company and the macro level of the whole economy, which is the issue of the giant companies. Someone asked the question, what about the size of the companies? Is there some reason to try to limit that? And if you push that, you can ask the question of, what type of authority today giant company are really confronted to? And if tomorrow you will have a company of one trillion of dollars of income, what will be the counterparts of the company? Uh, if the type of overwhelming power um, with the type of insane relation which can be constructed toward political officers for lobbying uh, will in place, uh, will that be a disaster? Or will you think that giant companies uh, because of the size and because of the statementship, which is mandatory at the size of a company, will contain some internal moral antibodies, which will wisely create self-regulation for the sake of common good. I think this question, which is just behind the meso level and the macro level, will be an interesting one to, contri to continue to think about. At the macro level, I think we have had a very interesting debate uh, between facts and facts on one side, and ideas which are, in, in some parts, little contradictory one another. China and India, 20 years ago, has been completely transformed by Deng Xiaoping and by Mahoman Singh uh, because they opened the way to free market and to free entrepreneurs. And so as soon as freedom to, to, to really become an entrepreneur was given to the population, well, they, they have grown uh, at a growth rate of 8, 10% for years and years. And obviously, the, the number of persons who went out from poverty has been enormous. So on one side, this, this is a, just an element of proof that this system is efficient and brings uh, economic and social value. But, but and to, to, to continue on that, uh, the preference for the stress of competition compared to the stress of the political police, I think is the kind of idea that we can share. However, um, how this still stands when we are using today 1.6 planet? How this paradigm is really, um, I would say, sustainable uh, with the fact that I don't think it incorporates uh, the wise use of the natural resources. And there is a debate then uh, between, on one side, the, the marvel of the market economy and other person who will argue that maybe we are on a train, on a fast speed train, conduced with either a blind pilot or an automatic pilot, but just going uh, towards, uh, at full speed, toward a cliff. And so the question of well, you see with my point. And last, um, I will, as a last category, uh, I will say uh, we have crossed a few questions which are linked to this macro question, but which are dealing with values. The first thing that I will uh, emphasize there is, uh, um, yes, free market and development, but atomization of competitive agents fighting one another uh, would be something could could that be something which had completely replaced care and caring question mark second question mark sometimes are we calling egoism a virtue in creating a miserable humanity doing so question mark is the mimetic design, well, uh, well described by, by René Girard, uh, conducing to absolute jealousy, whose last consequence is illimited greediness, 
and is a world of competitors, something which is embedded in the roots of jealousy, which will create illimited greediness. I think there, in these kind of uh, value-driven uh, questions, but which are completely related to the macro question, we can have some food for thoughts. And I will just finish these small value uh, items on uh, what uh, Francisco remind us. Um, when we think about that, uh, how we think generally, intellectually about a system, or how we try to think to the bottom of the pyramid as one of the yardstick to measure the collective equilibrium and the collective quality of our societies. Thank you for your attention.